Welcome to Pigeon River Farm, doing farming right. I'm Robert Brown, the owner of Pigeon River Farm. Thank you for viewing. Today's episode, we are gonna do some voltage drop testing. I got an old farm truck here, and the complaint is that just recently the weather got extremely cold, and the performance of the truck seems to be down. It's like it's running out of fuel with a heavy load. So it's a one-ton pickup. Uh, put a full one ton in the back of it, drive it up a hill, and it starts to run out of power. Uh, so I've got a couple clues, but it sounds fuel related. So one of the first things I'm going to approach here is actually checking the voltage available to the fuel pump. Uh, since there is some problems with this particular design with some ignition system, the ignition switch itself sometimes that's with bad contact. So. Yeah, I thought the logical spot, it's real easy access on this one. We're going to go ahead and we'll go a uh, voltage drop uh, at the fuel pump fuse. So we got the meters already up and going. Uh, let me get some other tools here. I want to need a, I'll need a back probe so I'll be able to go into it. The fuse is located behind this cover. And it's easy to access. So all we have to do, I think I said the word easy to access. <clears throat> There's our fuse. So what we're going to want to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to take advantage of having the two snap-on meters here. So this particular meter, we're going to do our voltage drop check at the fuse, and the other one we're going to look at what our static voltage is at our battery. So we're going to go ahead and hook up to the negative side here. And then I want to get my, I guess we'll choose, we'll choose yellow for today. Walked up there. Let's see what we want. We drove the truck in not too long ago, so hopefully we'll still have a, a good charge in it. Okay, it's still got a little bit of a surface charge from the charging system. So we're sitting at 13 volts here, and we're not seeing anything here. Nothing's on, the key's off. So my next step is to go on, and I'm gonna cycle the key. We're gonna go ahead and see what we have for voltage available at the fuse going to the fuel pump. That's past the relay. So, oh, we got a, a, a little bit of a drop differential there. Uh, I'm looking at 12, 12, four. So there is a there's a drop, not a successive drop, but there's a drop nonetheless. Fuel pump relay has been commanded off by the ECM, so it's only going to prime the pump, run for a couple seconds, and shut off. So I guess my question is, why do I have a half a volt? There's 480, basically a half a volt drop. There should be no voltage here whatsoever. So there's, a, there's kind of a strange, strange situation going on here that I can't easily explain. So let me cycle the key again and we'll take another look at it. Well again, we got about two tenths, so about 200 millivolt drop, and that's the kind of the rule of thumb that I usually put forward is about 200 millivolts is all that's tolerated. But it's really strange where I'm, when it cuts off here, I'm getting this voltage that should not be there. So what would be some logical things that could be unfolding? So I guess we're going to go and do a more in-depth voltage drop here and one thing we always seem to forget about is the ground side of the circuit. So let me cycle the key, cycle the key off. All the systems shut down, this doesn't have any interior light, there's no under hood light. So we're looking at 12.6 on the battery. Basically, now there's nothing. So, uh, whatever is completely shut down, <clears throat> I'm a little concerned. I got to figure out why we have the performance problem. I'm not convinced at this point that there's a fuel pump. It looks like it's more of electrical. So, one of the common things that I like to do is actually do a ground side check. So, to do a ground side check, either I can turn all the accessories on. So, this environment that I can control, I'm going to put a fixed load on it. Uh, use a little headlight tool. It's a technique that I have used for many decades, I guess we could say. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go between the battery positive. So I'm going to put this end here to the battery positive. And then I'm going to hook this up here to the chassis. And I immediately saw voltage, so that's, uh, that's not a good thing. So I'll hook this lead up now to the plus side of the battery. And I'm going to take the, the other lead and I'm going to hook up here. So we're going to see what the ground reference is at this point. So we got 12, 6 there. And basically we have 12. We're losing 600 millivolt drop. That should not be a thing, especially with the small amount of current of 4 amps. Be curious to find out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the headlights on and see, because that would be a whole series of these plus the rear tail lights and see what that voltage differential ends up being. Oh my gosh, we've got over a volt drop and the headlights don't seem excessively dim. They're Nobody complained about it. I didn't hear a, a thing. Uh, I don't know if it was driven during the day or at night when the complaint uh, took place with pulling the load. But with a drivability related problem, you got to make sure first off we have a adequate ground. So let me go turn the headlights off. You can see we took the excessive draw out of there. It bounced back. Now there's another technique, another methodology. So this is a, call an indirect so we're going to do the mathematical calculation between the two. So I can do the same test, but in this particular case here, we're going to assume that the ground is going to be higher than an ultimate negative portion of the battery. So I'm going to take this lead, I'm going to hook it up to the negative side of the battery, take my other one here, and this one I'm going to hook directly, so it's ground to ground connection. And you can see here again, uh, the math works out. We got about a half a volt, so 0.52. So this one case here, we're 0.5, so a half a volt drop with a four amp load on it. So this is a direct reading, not to be confused with that indirect. So I'm actually measuring the true voltage drop, referencing the meter's ultimate ground to the negative side of the battery and then to the chassis. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the headlights on to add a significant amount of current. So we have an excess of one volt drop coming across the chassis at this point. Uh, it looks like it varied a little bit. I don't know what the history is, but it'd be interesting to, to look around see there the the most common one is going to be the chassis ground where it hooks directly up and that's the main one otherwise that current that that voltage drop right now is going through the drivetrain so the most common or one of the more common areas for this to get back to its source so we've got about a half to three quarters of a volt that will ultimately come in through example the differential through the differential bearings through the u-joints the needle bearings there through the trans automatic transmission and ultimately black back to the block through in many cases through the rod bear or connecting rod and main bearings to ultimately end up back at the battery and it can actually i've seen over the years where uh, connecting rod and main bearings are nibbled away it looks like a mouse nibbled on them it was because there was a voltage drop condition just like you're seeing here on the chassis. It's one of the more dangerous ones cause a lot of drivability problem because you got to think about the reference to the computer is based off of that the, the point of reference so we got a differential here the fuel pump is based on one the computer is going to have wires coming out typically to the, by the thermostat housing on these that's going to reference so these two are now have a differential in it and so no matter what it is it could be an old truck like this could be a tractor could be a late model car the chassis ground integrity is critical so let me turn these headlights off okay let's do a little searching okay here it looks like right here below me where all my meter leads are is the chassis ground 
So we got a lead coming off the negative side of the battery cable going right to ground and then there's another small ground coming off. The integrity here looks good. I don't see any problem. We've got our load on there. We're still seeing this voltage. Let's go ahead and grab the ratchet or the 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and tighten that up. I got a pretty significant drop just by simply tightening it up. So I dropped it down to 150 millivolt drop and that's well within the acceptable range. So it looks like the whole problem here ended up being the, the fender, inner fender chassis ground bolt was loose. I don't see any corrosion on it. Okay, everything looks good. Let's take a little better look with the flashlight. I don't see, well, there's a little bit of corrosion down there, but not too much. Well, I got it completely tightened up. Real good mechanical connection here. Yep, that was all it was. It was simply the bolt there that goes down to the fender from the battery to supply the ground reference. So I want to let that be a good example. Sometimes problems can be relatively simple. We'll still ultimately take it for a test drive, see if we can duplicate it. But since what, the, what they were complaining about, and I immediately found a problem, I know the depth of it, it we definitely solved a problem, both hopefully short term for the drivability related issue, and, hope, and long term of that chassis ground, putting the voltage back. So, I want you to think about that for just a moment and I want to elaborate on that. So a small half a volt constantly arcing. So if you even had a little battery, a half a volt battery, and you had a wire and you were just constantly touching it, make plenty of circuit on the surface of a bearing, what would happen? It would pit it over time. You had needle bearings, it would slowly weld them together. All that, you have a ring and pinion gear, it can basically burnish the ring and pinion gear. So these are all things to be very aware of. And this is as old as old can be, but it's a very, very common problem. So I hope you learned something in this section here. And the next one we're gonna go is move on to a, a tractor that's got some problems and hopefully we can resolve that also. Well, in today's episode, we're gonna try to troubleshoot a problem on this International 766 gas tractor that I have here. That is my winter tractor for moving bales out in pasture my hay cutting and so on. I like the gas engines are easy starting except for recently. Uh, with the extremely cold weather we've had I suddenly ran into a problem and the problem ended up being the engine cranks, cranks fine, cranks fast, got new batteries in here, but won't catch. It, it basically kind of starts and then stalls out. And I'm suspecting fuel related. I did clean the fuel filter on there, no problem found there. So I'm suspicious of the area here for the fuel cell, solenoid, fuel shutoff solenoid. So that's the area that we're gonna look at today. We're gonna do some electrical testing. I um, ran into some problems over the years along this line. I'm not gonna condemn the expensive part right off the bat. We're gonna take an approach here of doing voltage available and see if we have a voltage drop problem or not. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the my new to me meter. Uh, I got a snap on. Uh, with a nice large display, so we're gonna give this a try. Okay, the first hookup we're gonna do is put an adapter wire in. Uh, because I wanna hook in here, and so what I'm gonna do is we'll disconnect. I have this simple little jumper. Will give me good access to the connection point. So we'll go ahead here and uh, make a hookup here. So that now coming in and that's going to be the power and I'm going to go find an adequate ground. In this case here I think I'll be safe to go over to the alternator bracket since there isn't any rust and there's not any kind of uh, uh, plastics or anything on anything of this nature the ground integrity at the alternator should be the same as the battery. I feel pretty confident. So that's the first thing we're going to do and we got this set to volts. Now I actually want to see how much power we have at the battery itself. To see how much voltage we have available, let's go ahead and we use a secondary meter here. That's another 
Snap-on 525 series, the older one. Um, I always like this. I can see, I'm really starting to enjoy the big display on that one. So we'll go ahead and we'll hook that up. I'm going to go to the same common ground location. So we'll go ahead and we'll hook there, and I already got it opened up so I can get into my battery. Okay, this is after a fresh charge, so we still have a little bit of surface, surface voltage in there. Charge, I made sure we were starting out with a fully charged battery. It hasn't even been turned on since I disconnected the charger. So next thing, next step I'm gonna need to make here is to go ahead and turn on the ignition switch and see what voltage we have available here. Now we know that that should be really close, usually within at least a half a volt. So let's go ahead and make that test. Whoa. Well, that immediately gives me some indication I got a significant problem. I'm only showing six and a half volts at that location. So I've got 13 volts with a little bit of a surface charge in it here and I got six and a half volts here. I got a significant high resistance load coming out here to the solenoid. So no wonder when it's cold that solenoid is incapable of pulling back. That's why I have to try multiple times and I just get lucky. So it's hit that threshold value of that amount of voltage drop. So the next, next task we're going to have to have is figure out where the problem is. I know on the wiring on this, it's almost all under the cab, so I'll have to figure out where we're at and see if we can make a difference. Well, after some work underneath the tractor, I found a connection point in uh, right where it goes to the relay, and I cleaned it all up. It was pretty corroded, um, and we'll pull the wire back, did a nice clean job on it, put some dielectric grease in it. And now we'll go ahead and we'll see if there is a difference. So we can see we're still looking at about the same uh, voltage level here. So nothing has taken place. The key's been off during the test. So the proof is going to be once we turn the ignition key on, if I fixed it or I did not, if we have a deeper problem. Okay, that's actually pretty, pretty positive here. We've got 13. 0.16 and we have 12.05. There's a volt drop on an older wire in the harness. So it's not a perfect scenario here, but there would be no problem on energizing this solenoid at that level of voltage. So even when I'm cranking and if the cranking voltage would get below the magic 9.6 volts and an extremely cold start, you can still see I'd have plenty of voltage available to pull back that solenoid. But when it got down to cranking that low, I might have been down to three or four volts, and that's not nearly enough to pull back that solenoid. So this was the approach that we took. So I did as I measured voltage here coming to the solenoid, the status at the battery, and we determined the voltage drop. So that was the process that's used. It's a very common process in the industry and it can be used on tractors and everything as you've seen uh, across the board. So I hope you learned something today and I thank you very much for watching and have a great day.